Did you know that Subgrid has been available in Firefox for almost two years now? And while I know it is not supported in any other browsers and that's super frustrating to me and it's one of the reasons I'm making this video. In this one, we're gonna be looking at grid template rows and using those on a subgrid. And one of the cool things with that is it enables things to be a little bit nicer and to match things up. And you can sort of, I think with a pricing table or other things, you wanna make a comparison table. It is a thing of beauty, but also if it doesn't work and you open it in a browser where subgrid is not supported, it doesn't actually break the experience like it might if you're using subgrid on your columns with the rows, it just sort of creates a decent enough fallback, I think. So if you're curious about that, stick around. Hello, my friend and friends, and welcome back for yet another adventure into Subgrid. If you are new to my channel, my name is Kevin, and here at my channel, I help you learn how to make the web and how to make it look good with weekly tips, tricks, and tutorials that mostly dive deep into the wonderful world that is CSS. This is my continuation on Subgrid Awareness Month because I want to show people how amazing Subgrid is and how much of a disappointment it is that it is only currently supported in Firefox, and I'm hoping to show enough use cases, examples, and different things like that to build up some momentum behind it. Because if enough people are excited about it and are talking about Subgrid, the other browsers will start putting some momentum behind it and trying to implement it. In this video, we're going to start by looking at why Grid isn't enough, and then what happens if somebody's in a browser that doesn't support Subgrid, what things would actually look like, which isn't terrible. It sort of goes back to the the not ideal situation, but it still gives them a usable experience. So let's go and dive into the code and check it out. All right, so here are my two lists that are using subgrid and I'm gonna pull up my grid inspector here because it's gonna help us see what's happening where I have a grid that's just pretty much setting up two columns and there's nothing much happening in that grid. Uh, and even if we did come in and try and create a grid within there, so let's say we come in here and we say uh, without subgrid, and we try and create a grid here and um, so we do a display of grid and you know we, we get some things happening and that's actually we have a without subgrid here and without a subgrid here and notice how they're, they're very different from one another right now and basically that's happening because the default is for stretch so this is trying to stretch the whole space so now like the alignment's even further off than it was before uh, so we could come in here and actually say like grid auto rows of say maybe a min content instead of the auto but then it's this is sort of going back to what we have and things aren't lining up and you go, oh, well, that doesn't work. Um, okay, maybe we could try something else of well, how many, you know, this one has, we have one, two, three, four, five, six here. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight over here. Maybe that's what's causing the problem. So then we say grid template rows. And on that, we could uh, say that we want repeat of, well, eight, we have eight times. And then we could try our min content here again, but this is gonna go back to where we were before, basically exactly where we were. So again, thing, you know, the first one lines up and then each one is off by a little bit more. What are we even comparing here? I'm not too sure. Um, the one we can get closest with is 1FR here. And so if I do the 1FR, you can see things actually start lining up because the stretch is working in the, the main lists one. So they're the same height. So the one FR here, it does mean that in these subgrids, let's go turn on the inner grid, we do have these two empty ones here. The issue with this is look how huge and ugly that is, right? So I'm gonna turn off that grid and like this, this does not look very nice. And okay, we could center things within the spaces and we'd be getting closer uh, to matching. So let's just, we could do that here and align items of center would at least line the line them all up in the middle and we're getting closer even though, but look at this, things are actually off by like a smidgen on this one. See how those aren't actually lining up and was that the same when it was here? No, it was better there. So interestingly enough, that actually throws things off and maybe there's some small tweaks and other things we can do here, but you can see even here it is going off a little bit now and I think it's because of the um, the length of the content and other things that are happening here it just becomes a little bit messy and hard to do, even though you'd think grid would be good at something like this. So what I'm gonna do is take this whole section here and let's comment that out. And then we are left with only our with subgrid right here, where we can use subgrid for that. So I'm gonna come all the way up just to push all that down. So we're not worried about all this other CSS. And one thing with my with subgrid, here we had our lists and then we had a without subgrid on each one of the ULs. We actually had two different lists that were behaving in similar ways. And like we saw in one of my other subgrid videos, where we were looking at grid template columns. And if you didn't see that one, I have linked it down below. In that one, what we 
we saw was this issue that can happen with grids. Even if the grid is set up identical and used in multiple places, they can behave in different ways and that can be a little bit frustrating. I have one too many closing you also. That's strange, but there we go. Get rid of that one. Um, so I'm not putting the grid directly on this. I'm just saying my with subgrid because I want to set up a main grid here. And this is the grid that sort of rules them all. So let's do that first. So we'll say with subgrid. And we can do on that a display display of grid, which I think makes sense. Now, really important, normally what would actually happen when you do this is this would happen where they'd stack one on top of each other. And just lower down in my CSS for this demo, I'd set something up. So, um, And that was for the other lists where we're looking at it quickly. But if you wanted to fix that right here, we just do a grid auto flow of column. And this is setting these two up to actually go next to one another. So if we go and take a look at that grid, you can see here we now have two columns because by default grid wants to stack things. Now I'm saying this parent, the children will all go next to one another um, instead. But this would mean if you were to add another UL in here, it could potentially run into problems because then it's going to go next to that one and they're always going to go across that way. But again, maybe that's what you're what you're after and you want something that's going to be looking a little bit more like that as well. So. You know, it depends on the space and everything else that you do have, but just why I'm doing that one. Um, and then right now they actually do appear to be the same width, but say you might run into situations where they're not. So when I do this, I also tend to do a grid auto columns of one FR just to try and make sure that the, the columns are actually equal with one another. And we won't see a change here, but this could be just a nice little precaution that you'd throw in there. And now what I'm going to do is we could grab you and we want to grab our ULs that are in there. And I guess you could have a, um, a class. I've talked about using like an inner grid class or a sub grid class maybe even because on this we do have to once again declare a display of grid but then we want to do a grid template rows of subgrid and something really weird is going to happen when I do this where they all stack on top of each other <laughs> and this is one of the issues with grid template rows is they all want to because we're using the parents rows what's happening in this situation is the parent by default only had one row to begin with. So let's let's turn that off and take a look at our grid. And so once again, I'll just pull up the inner grid right here. Uh, actually, no, let's do the outer grid, sorry. So you can see here we have one item. This whole list is what's sitting in there. So there's only one row. We have a one down to a two here. Uh, so we have like a grid line one here, a grid line two down here for my rows. We only have one row. And so when we say that we're using the grid template rows and it's using the template rows from the parent, we only have one, they all stack. And this is one of those tricky things with grid template rows on subgrid. Luckily, there's a really easy fix for this. Um, when I was creating this demo, I did a really complex solution <laughs> uh, using some JavaScript. So if you want to check that out, I'm leaving this here commented out because we don't actually need it. But if ever you needed something that was actually seeing how many children there are. So in this case, I had two ULs. I wanted to see which one had more direct children, so more list items in it. And then I would use that longer one to define how many um, how many rows I needed. And I was, you know, so then if you had 10 things, you could use that to, you know, populate and figure it all out. But then I had a thought of, well, do I need to do that? Or could I just come here and say that the grid row on the UL, and this is on the UL itself, is a span 99 or just some very large number. And that fixes it. And you might be going, wait, why, why, why would that fix it? And the reason that that fixes it is because if we come down, you'll notice that from eight, we get to 99 right there. And that's just because there's no content in any, any of those ones. So they're all just zero pixels tall and it's not actually causing any issues. Um, and maybe you don't need, you know, if you know, you'll never have more than 14 or 15 items, you could even do a span five and that might be a little bit easier for the browser to do uh, the layout on. So you could not push it to such an extreme if you don't want to. But as long as this number is equal to or greater than the total amount of rows, and the reason I went with 99 is because you probably never need more than that, um, you sort of fix that situation. And now we get this nice thing where it's really easy to compare everything. So let me turn off the, um, the grid inspector we had on there. Just so now we can see that everything is lining up. So if I want to compare this one to this one, this one to this one, you can see everything is just going straight across like that. And I, I just think it, it looks a little bit better. It's much easier to compare items from one to the other all the way across uh, and for things like that. So in situations where you want things to always be even with each other, it helps fix that situation. And the really interesting thing here is when you're using subgrid with grid template rows, 
uh, you can actually get away with not worrying too much about browser support. Because if I come and pull this up in Chrome right now, and we come and take a look, well, it's back to where we started when we had our initial grid solution. And it's not perfect by any means. Maybe you could do a little tweak just to make it a little bit easier to make comparisons across the board. Uh, and you could probably do that very, and you could even come in with an at supports if you want to or something like that. But for a situation like this, I actually think it's not terrible. It, it's a, a decent enough fallback where they're not getting a broken experience. It's just somebody who is in a browser that supports um, subgrid might be getting a little bit of a nicer uh, experience overall. And a little bit earlier, I did mention another video where I was saying that with grid template columns, we can run into issues with repeating grids as well, like using the same grid in multiple places doesn't always give you the same result. So if you haven't seen that video yet, it is right here for your viewing pleasure. And with that, a really big thank you to Stuart and Randy, who are my supporters of awesome over on Patreon, as well as all of my other patrons for their monthly support. And of course, until next time, don't forget to make your corner of the internet just a little bit more awesome.